had somebody else on on um, Instagram as well, and she she couldn't make it, but she wanted to um be here today too. So thank Perfect. you. Okay, Please. thank you. Thank you. I'm Dr. Jazz. I earned my doctorate from Shenandoah University in 2021. And during that same year, I completed an early intervention certificate course through Georgetown University. So that's really working with um, kids and patients from birth to three years of age. And I also completed the Lynn program through me the Medical University of South Carolina. And I'll talk more about that too um, towards the end of my presentation. And um, yeah, so I started working in South Carolina and then I wanted to do travel physical therapy. So I moved to Arizona and then I moved to Hawaii and I've been here now for about nine months. So yeah, that's kind of how things got started with my career. And I also love talking about physical therapy and educating people about this diverse field through my Instagram blog titled DPT and Me, which I know some of you all from there. So yes, yeah, it's good to connect. So I'm going to do a little icebreaker to get things started. Um, and if y'all haven't heard of Physio Trivia, it's a game that really helps students with studying. It helps with like icebreaking, team bonding, and it is um, really for physical therapy. So it has a lot of questions that um, people can ask and you can kind of guess. And it's a really fun game just to learn more about physical therapy. So I'm going to ask y'all a couple of questions. And y'all can put it in the chat. You can unmute yourselves if you know the answer. But yeah, it's super, super fun. Um, and it was created by Dr. Carmen and her husband. So yes, I actually got to meet them in person too for the first time um, this past December. So that was fun looking up with them. But okay, and how you play, like, it's kind of like charades. I don't know if y'all played this before, but I'm going to describe the... Um, the answer choice and y'all have to guess the answer choice. I'm not supposed to say certain things on a card, but I might say it because sometimes I cheat, but it's okay. And you can also play it by acting out some of the movements as well, but all right, let me see what y'all got, let me see. Okay, so this is an organization for physical therapists, very similar to this organization, um, but it's the national one. Um, it, it's, oh, did somebody say, let me see what we got. Let me see what we got. APTA. All right, Janae. So Janae, you have one, an Amazon gift card. So make sure I have your email too. Like you can put your email in the chat or you can um message me. Oh yeah, I'm gonna send that over as soon as we done. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh. Okay, I didn't know that we could answer before you were done talking. So now I'm on uh -oh. my Yep, yep, you know, yeah. You gotta stay on your toes, you gotta stay on your toes. Okay, this next one, this is, it's like a syndrome um, or a diagnosis. And it's when you have pain behind your um, lower extremity. And it can be like compression of a nerve root, like the L5 nerve root. Um, and there it goes, sciatica, there it go, there it go. Who oh, answer sciatica? Because it says N-A-B-B-T. That's Sydney. No. Oh, that's Sydney. Okay. Okay, Sydney. Yes, I have your email because I was emailing you. So I think I have your email. But if I don't put it in a chat to her, get it to me. Okay, that's perfect. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this next one, one more. This one is when, like, if you stand up or you make a certain movement and you feel off balance. And a lot of times it can be an association with like Meniere's disease and you can do, oh, somebody in chat. Let me see. Vertigo. Y'all played this before. Y'all played this because y'all was answering. Really my girls are studying. Studying okay. support. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> well, Jayla, make sure I have your email as well because you have one of Amazon gift card. Look at y'all. That was really quick. Usually people are like. I don't know or they, you know, they don't want to answer, but that was good. Thank y'all for answering. And do we have mostly, is it third year PT students or first year, second year? You can put it in the chat. Um, I guess I could have made a poll really quick, but that's okay. Let me see it's a got. lot of new faces in here, so I'll be interested to see as well. Yeah. Jayla, third year, yes. I know, Janae, you about to graduate. So, yeah. Well, yeah, definitely put it in the chat. Um, 
Um, oh, undergrad. Oh my goodness. Yay. That is so exciting. Thank you for being here. Like that is amazing. Perfect. Yes. Recent PV grad. Oh, yay. Thank you, y'all. Okay. So let's talk about my career. Um, So I started, like I said, I started working in South Carolina. I graduated in August, 2021. So um, I moved from Virginia, went back home to a small town and it's called Greenwood, South Carolina. And that's where a lot of like my family members are from. So I went there and I worked in early intervention and that's once again, working from the birth to three years of age group. So I really like working with that age group. That's one of my favorite, um, populations to work with because you really get to see so much improvement and you get to help the families go through something that, you know, it's, it's kind of scary, so I always say I love my job because I get to work with miracles every day. And a lot of my kids, you know, they were born at like 24 weeks. Um, they were in the NICU for over 200 days. And, you know, it's just, you don't know what is going to happen from there. So a lot of my babies too, like um, I had this one patient where she was born like 24 weeks. Um, she almost died. They said she had brain bleeds. Um, like it was just so much going on. And now she is, oh my, she's about to be two in May. And she's like walking, talking, like you wouldn't even know from looking at her, like what her medical history um, involved. So that's just why I like working in early intervention, just to help parents through that and um, help reach those milestones because you don't think about helping kids, like being able to roll or sit or crawl or walk, um, but it's important and it's needed. And early intervention has proved to be um, really good and have really good outcome measures. So the earlier you start, the better off um, the patient would be to reach their goals. But yeah, so I was working at like this woman-owned clinic, small clinic, and we went to homes. And then we also had um, like the outpatient part too. So we had um, patients come to our clinic and I have some pictures of it too. It was like really, really small when I first started working and then they moved to like a bigger building. And then we also did school-based contracts. So I was working in the schools and um, I would I would always joke and say, um, because once they aged out of like early intervention, they would usually transition to the school system. And I would always joke and say, well, I don't know if they're gonna qualify, but like I was the only PT there y'all. So I was seeing them in the schools, in the clinic, like in, in the homes too. So it was, um, it was really up to me, like what I felt like they needed and stuff. Um, and thinking about it, you know, looking back at it now as a new grad, it really was a lot. And yeah, I probably wouldn't recommend somebody doing that much as a new grad, but it was fun. And I learned so much in a short amount of time, about a year and a half I stayed, but yeah. And then I also did PRN work and in, inpatient rehab. So I worked there maybe like two shifts out the month. Um, and that was really interesting to just working in like a small town. I would bumping to people that my family members knew. And it was just fun. A lot of the people that worked there were really passionate about what they did. So um, they helped me out a lot with starting my career that early. But yeah, and some of the diagnoses I treated. So um, like I said, a lot of my kids were born like prematurely. I also treated diagnoses such as like cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, autism, very rare, like genetic disorders, um, amputations, CVAs, and Parkinson's. So with the amputations, I actually had one patient, he was, um, at the time I was seeing him, he was like 10 months old and his mom was taking seizure medication. She didn't know she was pregnant. So his limbs like never developed typically. Um, and they were like ruled to be um, like non-usable or non-functional. So he became a bilateral amputee by his first birthday. So I went in, I went in and um, was treating him. And I remember being so nervous. I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, I don't really know. So actually, when I was working at the inpatient rehab, I was telling my coworker about this. And she was actually like a PT and an OT. And she told me about how she had a baby walker because he wasn't tall enough to get into like a regular walker where we could um, get it through insurance and stuff like that. So she let me borrow that walker and we put on like the stubbies for him. 
So it was kind of like prosthetic legs, but without the feet or like the knees part. And we worked on like balance. Um, we worked on walking and it was just, it was amazing because it was like, I don't really know what's going to happen. They didn't know what was going to happen, but you know, I was willing to try everything. So that was one of like my stories that I feel like I'll never forget, but yeah, you know, that was South Carolina. It was a lot of fun. And then from there, I went on to do travel physical therapy. So I went to Arizona and I worked on a Native American reservation, the Navajo reservation. And there I did school-based pediatrics. So that was very interesting. It was different. Um, it was in the middle of nowhere. So like Target and Walmart were, was like an hour and 45 minutes away. Um, and a lot of times I had to go like to a different state. So I went, the closest place to go was like New Mexico. So I went there a lot, but, um, yeah, it was really interesting. They, I treated like a lot of, um, syndromes like cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, autism, and traumatic brain injuries. I had this one patient where she was like typically developing and she was in a car accident and she didn't have her seatbelt on and she was like eight. And then like she um ended up getting a TBI. But yes, I was working with her and the kids, they were really, really funny. They were very respectful. Like they were like, I've never worked with a group of kids like this before. I mean, they were really, really quiet, um, but so sweet. And then I worked with this one patient. He had autism and I didn't know he was verbal. Like he would never talk to me in our sessions. But like I said, you know, I like to talk. So I will always like talk to him and like tell him about my day and stuff. And at the end of the session one day, um, I was like, all right, bye. I'll see you tomorrow. And he was like, bye, Jasmine. And I was like, you, what? I didn't know you could talk. So then from there, like he would, every time he would see me, he would say like, what's up and all this and that. And I'm like, what in the world? So that was fun. Um, and the food was really, really good. I went to Phoenix a lot. And I went to Lolo's Chicken and Waffles, and that's where this plate is from up here. It was so good. And then this is um, fry bread. I think I said that right, fry bread. But this is a traditional um, Native American dish where they um, have like fried bread and beans and um, other vegetables on top of it, kind of like a salad. And then what I thought was really interesting, um, a lot of them would tell me their clan. So... Um, when you meet someone, when well, when they when Native Americans like go and talk to each other, they'll say, "Oh, um, I'm so and so. My grandfather was so and so, and great grandfather was so and so." And they would like go over like all of their family history, and it kind of reminded me of like Black Panther when um, they talk about like their um, history and um, their ancestors. So I just thought it was interesting how they keep their ancestors like really close to them and honor them throughout their conversations. Um, and you're not supposed to like date somebody from the same clan. So that's why too, they would introduce themselves like that. But then I got to go to Canyon de Shea and that was a beautiful place. Um, I did like a lot of hiking and all those things in Arizona, but yeah, I was there for about three months and it was good. It was a great time. It was a really good experience. And then from there, I moved to Hawaii and how I got this um, travel contract is just wow, because it's really hard to get travel contracts in Hawaii because they want you to be like licensed and everybody wants to come to Hawaii. So they go really quickly. And I didn't think that like Hawaii would be my second travel contract. I was, I wanted to go to Hawaii because I never been, but I was like, that's probably down the line because I really wanted my contracts to be like in pediatrics. And I'm like, there's no way like Hawaii is going to have a pediatric contract open. So then I was looking through like the website and stuff that I was doing my travel therapy through and it had a position open up and it said like, oh, um, a school based contract in Honolulu. And I was like, oh, like what? So I applied. But by the time I got like um, halfway through getting credential and stuff, like somebody already got the job. I didn't even get a chance to interview because it just goes so quickly. So then I was like, you know what? Like I really want to go to Hawaii. So I Googled travel um, pediatric physical therapy in Hawaii and this job popped up and I was like that sounds like a scam there's no way that they have a job there so then I applied and um, it was through a different like travel company and 